Hi, so this is going to be the first part of the lectures. This is covering chapter five um, on electric charges in fields um, using the slides available from, you know, from OpenStax. Um, first of all, a, an introductory section on electric charges. Um, electric charges exist everywhere. They can cause uh, objects to be repelled or attracted. The electric force is the um, strongest, well, is the strongest everyday force. So um, it, it leads to things like this. I love this picture. Um, you can actually see macroscopic effects from the, uh, the electromagnetic, from the electric force and from the magnetic force, which are closely related. Um, and, you know, here you can see that an electrically charged foam is attracting a stream of water, even though it's not touching it. Um, and when you, when something loses or gains charges, it can polarize things and cause um, stuff to be attracted, or it, usually it, it will attract because it will polarize other objects. Um, although it can cause things to repel. Uh, a lot of the examples in the book and that you will find in most physics textbooks um, talk about rubbing a piece of amber with a cloth. Um, and when you do that, then you're actually rubbing electrons off. There's, um, there's other common examples where, say, you rub your hair with a balloon and it starts um, and you're rubbing electrons off your hair and then you're charging um, the balloon in your hair and they become attracted to each other. Um, and there are a big thing there's two electric charges um this did not have to be so and in fact when we have the um in the strong force there's three charges so it just so happens that the electric force has two which makes things a lot simpler because we use um we use the signs positive and neg negative um the charge carriers in most um in most macroscopic objects are the electrons because it's easier to move electrons on so around so the negative charges um, and the way that a lot of the early polarization experiments and some of the stuff that you're going to do in your lab works is that you uh, you start with um, two objects um, in this case the amber and the cloth um, and when you rub the um, when you rub the cloth on the amber, um, what happens is that some of the electrons from the cloth pop on. That's what the arrows indicate. You got electrons moving the amber, and then you have more positive charges left on the cloth than on the amber. Um, so you have a net charge. Now, you can do a few simple experiments with um, with cloth or even tape um, and show that there are charges, but if you want to actually study them and uh, figure out how they really work and understand all of the properties, um, you need a larger amount of charge. So um, actually the way that a lot of these early experiments were done was, is really rather fascinating because they didn't know basics that we know now, but they're basic now. Um, and they, you had to come up with some really clever devices in order to uh, to build up electric charge. But remember, this was in a pre-industrial society um, or industrializing society when a lot of these experiments were done. Um, so one of the things that, uh, that they used was something called a Leiden jar, um, which is we think of it now as a capacitor. Um, you have foil on the inside and foil on the outside, and you have a metal rod which you can connect to the two. If you uh, you can connect the outside so that charge can flow between them, um, and you can um, do some work on the jar similar to when you are rubbing cloth um, to build up charges and uh, get. A separate, a large amount of charge built up that way, and if you do that, you can actually um, get a large amount of charge, so you can do some of these more complicated experiments. And in fact, you can see one of the first sets of Leiden jars in this lovely museum in Harlem in the Netherlands. Um, it's it's a fascinating museum, and if you ever get a chance to go, I'd recommend it. Um, and it's like the size of a room and it's a whole bunch of different jars um, that you can see right here. 
and um, you have like this crank that you turn to slowly build up charge. And by having such large jars, they were able to build up very, and multiple of them, they were able to build up very large charges to conduct some experiments, to even figure out the nature of electricity. Um, so fantastic museum, I strongly recommend it if you ever get the chance.